Hi, VincourtWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday, October 4th. Well, the Atlantic Basin tropical season is winding down now. We have passed the climatological peak, which typically occurs around the middle part of September. We've talked over the last several weeks about how the latter stages of the Atlantic tropical season tend to have more homegrown type tropical systems, those that develop over the Gulf of Mexico or the Caribbean Sea, rather than those that travel from uh, east to west across the eastern Atlantic Ocean, those that come off uh, the west coast of Africa, for example. And indeed, we have a tropical system right now brewing in the southwestern Caribbean that uh, very well could become a hurricane by this weekend over the Gulf of Mexico. It could even ride up the uh, Atlantic seaboard and produce some rain here, some much needed rain here in the mid-Atlantic region by the early part of next week. And we'll focus in on that potential Gulf of Mexico threat over the next several minutes. This is the latest map from the National Hurricane Center, an extension of NOAA based in Miami. There is one tropical system right now, a wave right here uh, north of Cuba, south of Florida, causing some uh, rainfall. It does not look like that has much potential to uh, uh, intensify into tropical storm status. This is the area of interest right now. There's a, a, uh, an area of showers and thunderstorms in the southwestern Caribbean. Looks very likely that this will intensify as it drifts to the north and west over the next couple of, of days. And by the time it reaches the Gulf of Mexico region right in here this week, and it very well could be hurricane status. There, a uh, couple of question marks in terms of its uh, potential, uh, mainly related to how it'll interact with Nicaragua and Honduras right here, and then the, the Yucatan Peninsula region of Mexico. In other words, will it weaken considerably going over the land here of Central America? Again, Honduras right here, uh, uh, right here and Nica Nicaragua right here. This is the Yucatan Peninsula, very likely could skirt along both of these areas and then reach the Gulf of Mexico and start turning in this fashion like this, maybe uh, eventually hitting the western panhandle of Florida. That's still several days away, but this is a potential track, again, skirting Central America, skirting the Yucatan Peninsula region of Mexico, and eventually tropical moisture could ride up right along the Atlantic uh, eastern states in the U.S. and produce some rainfall here, perhaps Monday, Tuesday time frame here in the mid-Atlantic region. So again, this is a possibility, a hurricane over the Gulf of Mexico by the weekend, and then the tropical moisture could very well ride up northward just to the west of the east coast of the U.S. Well, here's the latest colorized infrared satellite imagery loop from the Penn State Ewald site. Two areas of interest. One tropical wave sitting right here over the Bahamas, southeast of Florida, northeast of Cuba, causing a lot of rainfall in that area. That does not look like it'll reach tropical storm status. Certainly can't produce some heavy rainfall in this region. But here, tucked away in the southwestern part of the Caribbean, is this uh, area of showers and thunderstorms. This is the area of interest for the potential Gulf of Mexico hurricane by the weekend. Again, it'll um, head on over or skirt Central America right in this region, Nicaragua and Honduras, and then the Yucatan Peninsula, possibly cutting right through this region and then entering the Gulf of Mexico right around here by the weekend again possibility it could reach hurricane status by the weekend and eventually hit the western panhandle of Florida and some of that tropical moisture could very well continue northward just to the west of the east coast even producing some rain uh, in the mid-Atlantic region possibly around Tuesday of next week. Well one of the reasons that intensification is quite likely for this system in the southwestern Caribbean, again depending on how much land it goes over in Central America and Mexico, is the fact that the sea surface temperatures are still well above normal throughout the Caribbean Sea and mo most of the Gulf of Mexico. This is the uh, latest sea surface temperature anomaly chart. And this whole region here shows yellows and yellows and oranges are above normal. So it's still, this is 
nearly the uh, warmest time of the year for sea surface temperatures in this part of the Atlantic Basin and they're a still a little bit above normal. Notice off to the east, previous hurricanes have caused some upwelling and some uh, colder air has moved to the surface uh, in this particular area. So colder than normal water here, but right now this system of interest is tucked away in the southwestern part of the Caribbean in an area of above normal sea surface temperatures and again it looks like it'll take a track right into this part of the Gulf of Mexico and throughout that trek it'll ride up and over warmer than normal sea surface temperatures a positive a favorable factor for intensification over the next several days well let's take a look at last night's European model run the Europeans seem to have a better handle right now on this system compared to the GFS so we'll focus in on the European model run these maps available on tropicaltidbits.com We'll look at 24-hour increments, beginning with the forecast for Friday night. And then we'll look at Saturday night and Sunday night, again, based on last night's Zero Z European model run. Here is the prediction by the European model. I think, uh, uh, based on all the evidence, pretty good prediction here, that this system will be somewhere skirting the Yucatan Peninsula region of Mexico or perhaps going right in between Mexico and Cuba. Again, this is the forecast map for Friday night. Let's jump ahead another 24 hours and go to Saturday night. And here we go. By Saturday night, the European model has what is likely to be a hurricane in this particular position here. Looks pretty healthy according to the European model run. Again, very warm sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean Sea. So as long as it doesn't uh, weakened considerably over land of Central America and Mexico. It very likely could be a hurricane at this point. Again, this is Saturday evening, smack dab right over the uh, Gulf of Mexico, probably as a hurricane. Let's now jump ahead another 24 hours. And here we go. This is the forecast map for Sunday evening from last night's European model run. So it, it takes the system right here from this area across the eastern Gulf of Mexico and then slams it right into the Panhandle region of Florida. Again, this is by Sunday night. Eventually, this just rides up to the north and northeast and could very well produce some rainfall here in the Mid-Atlantic region in the Monday-Tuesday time frame. So again, there are signs that point to the possibility of a hurricane over the Gulf of Mexico this weekend, potentially could strike the western panhandle of Florida and then right up north, northeast into the eastern U.S., perhaps even bringing some rain here in the mid-Atlantic region by around Monday or Tuesday of next week. So we'll focus in on this over the next few days. Stay tuned to uh, VencorWeather.com for updates on what would be named Nate over the next few days if it reaches tropical storm and indeed hurricane status it would be named Nate. That's it for now. For VenCoreWeather.com, I'm meteorologist.